Hello and welcome once again to Poor Place TAS 100 and this episode is going to be on the puzzle sequence indexer. Right, so um, we have two stack nodes. Let's see what we have to do. Sequences are zero terminated. Okay, yeah, this is a sequence here. Read a sequence from in.v. So there is a sequence of one, two, three, four, five, ten items followed by a zero. Read the index values from x. So this is a list of numbers and they're all single digits. So zero, five, zero, four, like that. Look up the index. So zero gives you eight. So zero is that one. So zero is the first one. It's like zero based, like a lot of counting is done in computer languages. And an index is, is pretty much the way we would normally use an index. An index means to look up in a list in computing terms. So that one should be five. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, because it's zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So when they say five, they want 978 there. Right, so the basic plan for this is going to be as follows. I have a stack with them, and they'll be going in in this order. So zero will be gone in at the bottom, because it's the first one I'm going to get here. So I'm going to put them all in here as a... And they'll in effect be upside down. Then I'm going to get a number in here I need to look up. I'm going to send it down here, send it in here. And it's going to be this guy's job then to do the lookup. So how is it going to do a lookup? Well, what I'm going to try and do is as follows. Okay, say I need to get the third one. I need to throw away two. And I say throw away, I can't throw them away. I'm going to send them down here to be stored. Then I'll be at the one I want. I'll send it back to the person who's looking for it. Then I need to put that back on where it was and put these back in the right order. And hopefully that'll return that to its original state and then I can start again. So for each item, I'm gonna to have to rummage down the stack until I, until I know I'm at the right one. And as I'm rummaging down, I'm gonna to need to store them somewhere else down here, find the number and then undo the work by moving this stack down here. And I'll use the technique that we used before. Um, I think someone suggested it to me in one of my other, uh, on the first stack nodes, which has been very handy, is if you throw a zero at the bottom of the stack, it's easy to know when you've hit the, so you can't, like when you read an item and the stack is empty, the game, not the game, the, the program just freezes. It'll sit there, ad infinitum, it just locks because it's just blocking on an input. Anyway, that's enough yapping. So the very, very, very first thing I want to do is get everything into the, the stack, first of all. So move up to the accumulator. Then I want to check and see if I've got a zero. If I do, there's a zero at the end. That's the end. Uh, move accumulator to the right. Um, jump back to the start and then end. Jump, end. So what I mean by this is, well, in fact, it'll just block there forever, won't it? I mean, it'll just, it'll just, if I run that, um, I don't need to put it in into an infinite loop, do I? That'll just fill the stack up for me, lovely. Right. Move up to down. Now, I'm going to get this one here to tell me which item from the stack I need. So which item from the stack do I need? In effect, I'm going to make it even simpler. I'm going to ask it how many i'm going to i'm going to make this guy's job a little easier even i'm going to get this one to say how many you should throw away before you find me so 
So there's the stack. 860 is zero. And 797. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I was to move 9 to an accumulator and then subtract up and move that number right, and then I'm going to get a number back and I'm going to move right down. Now, just as I'm thinking about this, this will start running before this guy has, this has to, the, the rest of this program here can't start running until this part of it has actually finished. Otherwise, we'll start pulling items off the stack. I've done that before in a previous puzzle that didn't work so well. So when I get to the end, I'm going to move minus 999 down. Move up right, and the very first thing this is going to do is move left to nil. And if I ever need to, I can I can never go back to the start of this again. If I ever get to the end and need to jump, I'm gonna to have to jump to the to the S yes label here um, because this is just a special path in to block it at the start, so that I won't start taking items from the stack until this guy has filled them up for once. Um, so move right to the accumulator. That's the value this guy has given me. Um, and then I want to move. So on this stack down here, I am going to throw the numbers down. And when I'm pulling them back off, I'm going to use that trick that someone was telling me about or saw on a YouTube comment. So I'm going to throw a zero down. So that'll allow me, hopefully, then to detect the end of the, the that'll hopefully let me detect the end of the The stack, that's what I'm saying, yeah. So I want to check and see whether I am now at zero. Remember, I can get a zero in at the very, very start. Because if I move nine to the accumulator and subtract up, I do have, where are they? Maybe I don't, no, I do, yeah, there are nines in this list. So I can get a zero in and if there's a zero in, then that means I just want the top item from the stack. I don't want to actually have thrown any away. So jump on equal to zero, we'll say just, oh, I'm going to be horrible. Label two, L2, this is a terrible. It might as well be writing basic with line numbers at this stage. Um, move up, down, and jump. to L, but I also want to sub one. So when we get to L2, what do I need to do? So this is, so, so let's just, um, let's just be very clear what I've been asking it to do. Okay, this shouldn't be a jump, should it? This should be, yes, it should be a jump. It should be a jump. Do well. So, when I get to L2, what do I need to do? And in fact, this guy has, hmm. Okay, let me clarify my thinking. This has been, changed or not changed this asks, this has been calculated to tell me the number i need to throw away so on the throw away i may move them down 
So when I get here, the one currently on the top of the stack is the one I want. So move up to the accumulator, move accumulator right, and move accumulator up. Stick it straight back on top of the, the stack again. And then I need to fall into another little mini loop, which takes the stuff from the stack and throws them back up here. So, move down to the accumulator. And remember, I don't actually want to put, so I, I'm putting a zero on, on, on this stack here. I'm moving them up. So jump on equal to zero back to the start. I don't actually want to move the zero that I'm going to find here up here. So jump on equal to zero to the start and then jump to L3. Okay, that's just one of my, now I've got a tendency to do that. I, I, I kind of write it as a pair. And then as I'm doing this, I use the same term here. It's an excuse for saying I don't know my left from my right. This guy is not dealing with his right at all. He's always dealing with his left. So they are always lefts there. Okay, is that any better? No. Why not? Okay, I've got the 860 here, so it looked like it worked. I mean, it came in the first out should be 860, but what I haven't done is I haven't just done a move up down here as well. 860. And that hasn't worked. Ah, because here I move down to the accumulator, but I never move. See, I can't just move up. I can't just move down to up because I need to go through the accumulator because I need to check it for zero. So move accumulator up. Just silliness on my part. I thought I'd that done. Let's see if finally. Okay, so what seems to be happening is what? Am I getting, I'm getting a zero in there. Here I'm taking them all back out. What happened then? Did I? Yes, after me explicitly saying that what I wanted to do was not put the zero from here on the top of the stack. That is exactly what I did. So, hopefully, fourth time's a charm.
Yep, that's ticking away this through this quite nicely. Now. So again, it's really simple to see what this is doing. Um, it actually makes kind of sense to my to my sort of brain. We we have them all stored on the stack. In effect, in the opposite order because of the way a stack works. So the way to find the correct one on the stack, I think, would be be it depends if you want to say whether it's zero based or but i don't i'm saying how many to throw away so this guy comes here it takes that number off the top of the stack it doesn't actually throw them away it, it just temporarily stores them down here it gets to the one it needs therefore once it's taken that number away oh we're on to the second one now which is great um it gives the answer back here and then it falls into a little loop at the very end to move everything that it has here back up and it does that by using this trick of having a zero on the bottom of the stack we know we can't see a zero um normally zero isn't an, a, um, a valid one that we could be returning and therefore that allows it to be a special case and it helps now i mean if zero was you could put minus 63 well you know if, 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 it was, if all numbers were were, were were legal then you'd have more problems right i can hit fast on that so it's a 2.5k of cycles. Um, so we're quite low on the old instruction counts, which is very, very good. Um, we're just here. There's obviously some other... So obviously a peak here around halfway. Now... You see... <sighs> When I looked at this, I went like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine. There are nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine squares here. If you if you dig my drift, okay. Which is one. And like in th like, let's say there were only nine in this list. See, this is how I was. Oh, I'm going to be dead clever here. What I was originally thinking of doing was something like this. If there was, if if I had enough, try and store each box. Knows that it's num. He would he would know he's number one, and he'd know he's number two, three, and then when you get a new number in, it's kind of passed around by everybody, and the person who recognizes it's my index just kind of stuck a number out. And I thought I was being a genius. However, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are only nine of these boxes, but there are ten of these. And because it needs, so I thought, well, could one box store two? Could this box say, well, if I get a one or a two? But I don't think it can, because I got to use the. I've only got an accumulator and a backup. Now, possibly, the two attached to here could you know if i get a one i pull the first one off the stack and give it and then put it back if i get a two and there's enough code to set up i mean it's possible but then you'd actually see uh, anyway I, I, i'm talking nonsense i haven't done it um but i may try it thank you for watching this hopefully it's been interesting and entertaining and enlightening if you did like it please drop a like on the video if you like the channel, please do consider subscribing to it. If you have any comments, especially about um, how you parallelize this when you've only got two stacks, I'd love to read from. I'd love to read them. Thanks again for watching. Bye now.